us how we feel about Anna Gershwin. She's loving, she's smart, she is extremely funny. As the one time when Jeffrey got excited about something at our house, and he, he was having trouble getting words out. And she sweetly looked at him and said, honey, use your words. <laughs> uh, she's sensitive, she's compassionate. And her family is wonderful and they have welcomed Jeffrey as part of their family. And that's really important to us. And I, I believe she's truly the right person for our son to be married to. So, and I'm going to get to Jeff and I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> I think Jeff is a kind, uh, helpful. <laughs> I'm not going to sit up here and talk about all of your accomplishments or anything. I just think you're a good man. I think you're kind, you're helpful. Your speed of life is like, 1.8 times mine, but that's to be expected. Uh, and he has been a delight to have as a son, and we, through him we have met so many people, uh, both from high school, even uh, eighth grade, but high school and SIGA. And he is absolutely crazy about that animation. When we go someplace in Dallas, I don't know what bothers him, but he's always looking kind of cool. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to kiss her. <laughs> 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 though, because the Grateful Dead or Billy Strange is always. <laughs> so anyway, we love you, Anna, and we're so excited for the both of you. And I hope everybody has a good time tonight. And uh, Anna's dad's going to say a few words, and then I'm going to. Uh, actually, I want to say one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the. This is. I think I've used this in a speech about Jeff before, I can't remember when, but this is uh, lyrics from a song. Uh, I call, I think of it as poetry. And uh, I'm just going to read it to you if I have to because I, I couldn't memorize it all. As a matter of fact, I couldn't find the lyrics today and Katie somehow pulled a rabbit out of the hat. <laughs> the song goes, my only son my precious one, come listen here to me. I am the bow and you are the hour, arrow, and now you must fly free. The bow is bent, so the arrow is sent on its long and graceful flight, and the path you make will become your fate. God is on your side. And then I'll repeat, my only son, my precious one, come listen here to me. I am the bow, and you are the arrow, and now you must fly free. Dallas, he's working in Houston. 
And then before you know what happens, Jeff transfers with KPMG to Dallas. And I called Julie and I said, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> In the positive way, right? I said, there's two things though that, are, that I was nervous about at that time. I said, one, Jeff lived in real estate, and he was married to Grisham. So what <laughs> <laughs> we had to do something about like that, okay? And the other little detail is he hadn't taken me to lunch yet, <laughs> and so you know, pandemic, blah blah blah. And we're sitting there on one night, and he said, "I won't take you to dinner tomorrow." I said, "I got a really important business meeting tomorrow, but yes, I will go to lunch with you tomorrow." And so we got that done, and so we uh. Everything turned out for the better. I love being here tonight. Um, my love for Jeff has really overcome some real concerns I had, though. <laughs> One of them, and my son Tyler can attest to this, he's the luckiest fisherman I've ever seen. <laughs> and by the way, he may be the worst fisherman I've ever seen. And he catches everything, and he makes us really angry. <laughs> That's one. Love of cats. Oh my gosh. Positions and cats do just not do long, right? <laughs> the time it took you to propose, the other one. <laughs> and lastly, you know, can't, can't you just bring the cruise light? That would be love. Moving the air. Oh my gosh. My baby. My third. I'm a third. Julie's a third. We thirds get away with anything we want with our parents. <laughs> right, Tyler? <laughs> but Anna, Anna, Anna Smart, and she uh, had two older siblings, and she learned. And uh, besides being smart, athletic, she learned from siblings and understand how to get things done. She did great in, college, in high school and college. And I remember the day that she was getting ready to go off to college after doing great in high school. And uh, she was really enamored with Vanderbilt, and that was something that we were really having a hard time with, but another kid going away to school, so luckily we were able to corral her and, and get her to go to uh, UT, which obviously turned out well. Freshman business school entry and all that stuff, which is really hard. But memories of Anna go back to, you know, Crested Butte Snow School. When we put her snow school, Julie and I and the family go ski, and they were supposed to go teach her how to ski, and we would uh, come back late in the afternoon, and she never saw the snow. She was down there drawing pictures, and that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to do that. But from that to all through high school and college and doing great, and then at last, you know, we finally said when she was being so successful in her business career and getting recruited by these different companies, my wife asked her, she said, people ask me what you do, and we don't know. And I said, I don't know either. So we asked her on a family text, to describe what she does for a living. So she wrote a little paragraph. I think Tyler started, Caroline, Richard, me, and whoever. And we're all going, okay, we still don't know what she does. <laughs> and then she got this great job at this uh, company called Encyclopedia Britannica. For you old people, we all know what that is. It's all online now, by the way. And so I was worried that she'd be actually selling books door to door or something. <laughs> Instead of writing their remark, and I get that in, that's not <laughs> we, are, we are so proud of this beautiful woman here and all that you accomplished. And I want to make a toast to the match that God made in heaven, which is Jeff and Ed. I'm going to turn it back over to Jeff for his blessing and then we'll eat. Video. Ten minutes. A lot of pictures. Give or take. We have a video to play, and after the video, I think we have some toasts to say. Mm. Any, I think we'll have a we'll few planned, and we'll have somewhat of enough mic. But again, thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you can try the
to this day, I don't remember, like, um, but um, I will tell you a story about when, uh, well, I should probably start off by saying I talked to my husband this afternoon. He's like, I'm going to tell the story. He's like, why well, I'm telling the exact same story. I'm going to make something else. So, this is coming. I mean, Jeff is going to be my brother in law. I'm marrying Jeff will like this story too. Um, so back in 2017, 2018, I had a bunch of surgeries, and so we finally, I finally had my last one, and Jeff was like, you guys can have the ranch for the weekend, you know, like you and Richard, bring with me, our dog, and um, so we went down there one weekend, and the surgeon told me after my last surgery, he's like, yo, where, I, I work with their implant processors, he's like, yeah. And so he said, don't wear anything too strong of a magnet. So I wore like a one instead of a four. And Jeff was trying to his ranch, and all of a sudden I noticed one of them wasn't on my ear. I have to say crap. So um, we started looking for it, but the grass was like this tall where we were. There was a pond, and the dogs were running around. We're looking for it. And then Jeff said, yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed when Jeff grows his hair kind of long, it kind of has a life of his own. <laughs> so he leaves. That was perfect. That was just it. And he comes back with like this food rocker, and Jeff and Mary come with him to come help us looking for it. Jeff reboxed the entire, it's probably about a thousand square feet or so. We reboxed the entire in our area. And we finally found it, but you know, I was like, nobody would just do this for anybody's, you know, their girlfriend's sister, or you know, like they would do that like somebody they consider their family. So that's what I did. Just really to your brother in law. So that's awesome. Start out. Uh, I first want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Barnwell for this amazing evening tonight, and want to thank you for the beautiful uh, wedding and reception tomorrow. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Justin McCon, Jess Beckman, and which is truly an honor coming from him, my best friend since we were four years old. You know, I've been the best man at both of my older brother's weddings, and uh, that's cool, but they're my brothers, my family, and they're, they're stuck to me no matter what. So <laughs> kind of have, have to ask me to be their best man, but uh, friends are the family you get to choose, and for Jeff to ask me to be his best man was genuinely an honor. Uh, he and I have, he and I are very different. <laughs> you know, you know, Jeff is a very well-known Mr. Fix-It, while I might be more of a Mr. Break-It. <laughs> He's punctual. I was the last one to show up at the church today. For the uh, and the list goes on. But in high school, Jeff had a huge influence on me. Being friends with Jeff, taught me that being cool is more than just going out on the weekends. It, it involves hard work, like getting good grades, and actually applying yourself in school. <laughs> thank you for that, Jeff, along with being my full-time Uber driver in high school, before that was even a thing. <laughs> they say you never really know someone until they have lived, until you've lived with them. Jeff and I found out that firsthand, our freshman year of college, living together in towers, along with another groomsman, Paul, over here. Unless he's trying to clean up and then he's a neat freak. <laughs> Talk to Millie in a minute. Uh. It might be a little OCD. <laughs> but most important of all, I learned he is super loyal. I won't name names, but I'll never forget getting into a physical altercation with one of our sweet mates that rubbed all of us the wrong way. He had pinned me down on the ground, and right when Jeff and Paul walked in the front door, neither of them hesitated and jumped on this homeboy and started wailing on him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'll try to wrap this up, but I want to first address the bride, Anna. 
Anna, in the last five, six years, I've known seven. you. Seven. Seven. <laughs> seven. Almost seven. Almost seven. Almost a decade. Yeah, almost a decade. <laughs> I've come to love and appreciate you so much. First, because you put up with Jeff. But seriously, also because of how much you love, and I see the love between both of y'all. I'll never forget when I knew y'all were truly meant to be together. I came to, I came in town to help y'all move into y'all's first townhouse. Uh, and thought, damn, she can get through this. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for making. Thank you, Anna, for making Jeff so happy. He's now your problem. Um, <laughs> over the rain. Everybody, let's raise the glass. For one another has not. 
got graduated college, took a stab at long distance, got your first adult jobs, moved into your first place together, got engaged, and bought a house. And tomorrow, y'all are getting married. And yet, through all of these life transitions and big steps in your relationships over the years, we still see that original spark. The way y'all look at each other, treat one another, and just want to be together. Your love is infectious to those close to you. We have no doubt that y'all are meant, meant to be together, and that your marriage will only bring y'all closer. So congratulations, Anna and Jeff. We both love both of you more than we can put into words, and we are so honored to be standing next to you two tomorrow when you say I do. Congratulations. Woo! Uh, I'm Jeff's cousin. Uh, I came here with my very beautiful and pregnant wife. So as you can imagine, I've been listening to a lot of Paul Simon lately. Lots and lots of Paul Simon, so I'm feeling pretty sentimental <laughs> these days. <laughs> So tonight I have two stories and a piece of advice. The first story tonight I have is about our sweet Anna. Anna is just so happy to be the star of my favorite video I've ever watched on cell phone. Uh -oh. Don't be gross. <laughs> but this is a video of just Jeff and Anna. Don't be gross. <laughs> 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 and this video was taken in those incredible landscape in New Mexico in the winter, so snow was everywhere. The kind of snow that, you, that hurts when you look at it because it's reflecting off the beating sun so hard. Jeff is filming, as you might have said. But the perspective is Jeff on top of a steep embankment of snow looking down. So Jeff's looking down at Anna, who is at the bottom of this embankment, which is apparently pretty steep. He's going to say, Struggle busting up this hill. All while Jeff is just chuckling to himself, making no attempt to help her. <laughs> he did a great job of keeping the camera stable though, so watch the camera. <laughs> the entire time Anna is lighthearted, has this lighthearted bemused look on her face. But if you look closely, there's a moment where Anna is saying to herself, is this even going on? <laughs> Face first and slow and when my soon to be Phil's casually laughs to himself? <laughs> Obviously, you made up the hill. With or without Jeff's help? I don't know. Yeah. That was the only thing. Now I have a story about Jeff. I can tell you a lot of stories about Jeff. I can tell you about how as a child he put a fork in a light socket and he was getting dream about it. <laughs> I can tell you about how uh, uh, him and my best friend John once blew out his Tomlin's back window by trying to push over a deer blind in the back of the car. <laughs> no explanation. They were playing drunk. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you about. Uh, I'm going to tell you about a tangential story, which is actually already been mentioned by Mr. Gresham. Uh, it's about a cat. <laughs> it's about a cat. Just cat, actually. A <laughs> cat uh, and Actually, about a year ago, I got a text from Jeff asking if anyone wanted a cat. <laughs> he wanted to check with family members to make sure he could find someone before he looked for a good home. Now, Jeff tells me the reason for picking up the cat are things like she runs around the hall and makes a lot of noise, <laughs> she crawls under the door, she keeps us up at night. <laughs> As I'm hearing this video myself, Jeff, that just sounds like owning a cat. <laughs> well, I agree to take this cat. And in the beginning, everything seemed just totally normal. Uh, she was willing to it because she was in the space of other pets. But then she gets confident. Uh, this cat is insane. <laughs> Like the most crazy cats, this one is particularly insane. <laughs> she attacks other animals for the crack of open door hinges. <laughs> She'll dive bomb pets from mantles above her. <laughs> she does this new thing where she takes her, uh, her little mice and she dips them in like scented wax heaters <laughs> and then throws them across the room. <laughs> so yes, yeah, it gives them weight so they go farther. <laughs> A little curve to it. First, though, is she loves everything. Oh, and for those of you who don't know what 
Smart Lens or Hat Cats. Yes. SPP. <laughs> I changed cat cushions, cat cushions about once a week, so that's, uh, that's pretty bad. But guess what? She is my baby, and I love her so, so much. She's my baby princess. So all I have to say, Jeff, and everyone here, you have incredible intuition. Keep going with your gut, because, oh my gosh. So the last piece of advice I have is, um, something that I think back to occasionally, more than occasionally, when I'm having trouble with my wife, and that is, uh, now that uh, I'm coming to the end of this, every time you feel judged, put down, or attacked, or ridiculed by your spouse, just remember, they are on routine. You gain nothing, they gain nothing by putting you down. You've both signed a lifetime together. This person next to you is on your team and literally your partner. So when friction starts, stop and think about what your partner is trying to say because they are not trying to bring you down. I love you both dearly, and you both will be so happy. Um, so I think I know most of you, but for those of you that I don't know, uh, I've known Jeff since probably the first day of freshman year of high school, and honestly, been pretty good friends since then. Um, honestly, I spent a lot of time with you, especially when you got a car and you drove me to school. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Uber. You made sure rest in peace, or me, I don't know. Um, but honestly, like throughout your entire entire life, like in high school, like always super close, and it's kind of tough, like leaving for a little while, going going to California for a bit, but. Every time I came back, and I think you were one of the only people that I'd always make an effort to spend extra time with. And I remember one time I visited senior year of college, the first time I met Anna. It was so easy. I don't think I've ever really remembered how easy it was to meet you. It was like, honestly, we were already friends and I haven't even met you, but from. <laughs> You this? this is, I'll give you a little bit more uh, color. Jeff was living in uh, the Sigma house, and I remember the first time I met you, I or, or Jeff had already told me that she had told. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, she said, she said, no, Jeff had basically, uh, like from what I met you, it sounded like Jeff had already given you context about like, how good of a friend you were because. We didn't see each other a lot, but whenever we did catch up, it was always, you know, I could talk to Jeff for, you know, an hour, but whenever I had already heard of all of the great things about you, it was, you know, great to meet you because it was so easy to be here with you. And I told Jeff after meeting you, I was, and I keep saying this basically every time I hang out with y'all, that you're way, way cooler than Jeff. <laughs> Every time I tell Jeff that, he's like, well, you just have to go. And he was a group of every single person. True, true. 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 But yeah, I mean, uh, like, you know, the, the time I was in California and, you know, coming back recently, I feel like I got to see y'all every other week versus maybe once every 18 months. And what I've started to realize is, like, Anna, you actually bring out the best of Jeff. Uh, I didn't know you before Jeff, but after hearing all the wonderful things all of your friends have said about you, I kind of think it might go both ways. But Jeff, I know that you have a catch in Anna, and I love spending time with you guys. I love you both. I'm really happy for you and excited for what the future holds. <laughs>